Good evening and welcome to Season 2, Episode 4 of Once Upon a Time in the Old World. I am your GM, Jim, and this is my party of Old World Explorers. Uh, hi, I'm Roger. I'm playing Johan von Erfinder, uh, the human engineer, and this week I can't remember what I spent my XP on. Hey everybody, I'm Aaron and I'm playing Hagen Ritter von Delbers, Knight of the White Wolf, uh, and he is human. And last week I spent uh, my XP on, uh, on weapon skills, shockingly enough. It, by gum, it be me, more deck. The Dowie Pit Fighter, and this week I mostly have been saving my XP. Hi, I'm Colin. Uh, Col uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay, I'll I'll try this again. <laughs> now I've got the giggles. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Colin. I'm playing Carolyn Redemacher, the Human Warrior Priest of Ulrich, and I spent my XP on willpower. Hi all, I'm uh, Dan, and I was about to say I'm Ilmarin, but I'm actually Dan and I'm playing Ilmarin, um, and I went on an XP spending spree, because I had like 500 points to spend, so I've gone up a level, I've got loads of new skills, I've upped all a load of my talents and all the other bits and pieces, so I'm just a lot better at talking to people now, apparently I can lie and people can't oppose me, so it's great, I'm going to do a lot of lying I think. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Dan has obtained superpowers since he, he last uh, played, or has become a lot more useful, should we say. That's everybody, isn't it? Have we missed anybody? No? Yeah, that's everyone. Okay, lovely. So, we pick up the story. Um, the players have arrived in Middenheim. They've got themselves a bit of a base of operations, an old tavern warehouse sort of thing where a couple of their friends from um, Ubersreich have joined them. Um, they've managed to upset uh, a couple of um, quite important people within the city already. One known as the Big Cheese, um, who happens to be part of some underground operation of some form. And... Who else did you? I, I believe you've had, you've had some run-ins with the cultists as well, don't you? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I uh, the evolving you kind of upset us. The big cheese yeah. came, smashed our place up, and the cultists charged Absolutely. in and tried to kill us and just failed yeah. miserably. Yeah, they couldn't force their way past an elf. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. no need to. Yeah, no need to rub it in. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, last week you attended a party, I believe. Um, Elmarin spent his time he, he, he'd been spiked actually by the halflings who wanted to get him a bit rowdy and uh, it had been all too much for him uh, as he'd had a couple of um, heavy drinks of the halflings eye which is like a very similar um, absinthe sort of drink a bit of a shot that he, he drank in sort of a half pint cup um, yeah far too much um, the things I do for my fans absolutely where did we leave it oh, what, what did we uh, do last or well, what was we, uh, I know you we were, were searching for the big cheese uh, we'd we questioned were, were, the halflings and found a lead to yeah. find some of the big cheese's minions yeah, we were going to go yep. back, check on Ilmarin, and then we were going to go stake out the cocky dame. And, cocky uh, dame. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay, so you get back to um, uh, Artor Rises, and um, Ilmarin looks fairly well with it, actually. Um if it, you've basically just lost nearly a, a full, nearly 12 hours of your life yeah you've got no idea what happened you went to sleep you, you went to a party um you were sat talking to some people and then the next thing you know you sort of woke up back at you know base camp um not really knowing what had gone on you don't feel sick or anything you just it's as if you've blacked out and woke up 12 hours later, which you have. 
by a Syrian. What happened? Where? Are, how did I make it back here? Uh, oh, you were brought back. Yeah, by a uh, yeah by people. Yeah, yeah. Apparent, apparently, you uh, you got a bit wasted. So it says Mister Lerner, um, the, uh, the the guy who's looking after the bar that you know from the Red Moon in in Uber's Reich. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah, uh, you got tanked up at the Arfling party. Hmm, that's unusual. Uh, <clears throat> we shall keep this between us because this kind of thing doesn't happen to elves. And I certainly don't want that kind of news making back to uh, the family. Oh yeah, I, I don't tell anybody. My uh, my lips are sealed. Fantastic! I know it's I can a count on you. Tightly sealed thing. Your grasp on vocabulary, as always, astounds me. Absolutely. Uh, where's Where's the rest of the party? Uh, they They went out again. Um. But they said, if you wake up, I'm to keep you here and they'll come back for you. Fair enough. Um, then I shall have a glass of your finest wine while I wait for Oh, air of the dog. Air of the dog, <laughs> Mr. Hill Warren. Yeah. Ah, I feel quite all right, actually. Surprisingly, a good, good night's sleep did me the world of do good. You know, do you know there are help groups in uh, Middenheim who can help you with your uh, constant abuse of uh, alcohol? Oh, well, you know, it's always good to meet new people. So um, the barman's advertising the AA now. <laughs> <laughs> Not entirely more, sure. More, more of a friendly reminder. He is your friend after all, yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah. You, know, is that, you know, after the stress of the other night and those cultists breaking in and having to, you know, use my sword and whatnot, I'm, you know, I was a little bit stressed and needed to relieve myself. What do you mean by relieving yourself? Just There's none a of that glass in this of bar. Wine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mario goes and sits in the corner and waits for his party in a rather jovial mood, twinging away on his loot. <laughs> yeah, as you, you guys get back to, to near our tour rises, you can hear the twiddle and the twing of uh, loot strings. Um, and it does happen to sound quite good at the moment. Well, it sounds like Elmarin's back, uh, feeling like his old self again. Yeah, I'm surprised he's playing that the way he passed out. Hmm. It'll be good to have him with us if we're have to if we're going to case that uh, that tavern. Yeah, he's got a keen eye. I'm not exactly subtle. Well. You know, I can't really say a lot there. I'll say glancing at my pistol. <laughs> right, let's see. Let's see how he's doing. Walk, step into the bar. Yeah, the bar's oh, quiet. Yeah. <laughs> the bar was quiet. <laughs> it was quiet. Yeah, and Warren just like banging out some tunes in the corner in quite quite good spirit. You're looking cheerful after the dwarf brought you home. Ah, oh, Mordek, did you carry me home? I'd be doing that, I. Ah, oh, see, I knew you liked me, really. Yeah, a lot of people. No, saw... uh, I'll be saying, I, I say, I say, I say, I still be smelling of perfume. <laughs> and you smell fantastic. Has anyone told you that today? You smell lovely. If you want to borrow some, ask me nicely. <laughs> <laughs> just shakes his head you, you oh, notice that Franz drink. sort of almost hides behind the bar at that last comment like <laughs> as if he's waiting for something to happen and then he, <laughs> he realises it's not and, oh, okay. well Mordek is known for smashing things over people's heads so <laughs> yeah he, he sort of puts one of his tea towels over one of the barrels <laughs> <laughs> Ah, so so uh, so so, what are we all doing today? I'm sure, as always, we have something interesting to do. Uh, we have a lead on the big cheese. H, oh, is that that guy that roughed up our bar? Mm. Yeah, that. I say again. we'd be kicking in some teeth, like. Well, well, 
also sounds like he might have some backing from somebody with either some political power or a, or a lot of coin. Uh, he may be involved with the fires that took out uh, the engineering guilds, houses, and the smiths in the in the city. And those are almost certainly cultist related, because they've stolen a load of stuff like a book of dark secrets. Yeah, that. Um, bit of evil magic and stuff, and some warp stone and some other stuff. What was the other stuff? Some engineering plans, stuff, yes, engineering it? plans. Plans for a for a cannon. And... Plans for improved cannons. Sounds like a shopping list of disaster. Sounds like uh, a shopping yeah. list we should not let them keep. Yeah, and they're not sure how they got in either. They managed to melt through a rather sizable steel door. Supposedly impenetrable door. Hmm. Well, that certainly is interesting. Why are we getting involved? Because they're paying us. Oh, they're paying us, in which case, um, you know, that, that does seem to be our motive. So, lead on. Well, that and, and the Church of Ulrich asked us to intercede and recover their relics. Uh I'll make a very subtle kind of rubbing my fingers coin gesture to Ilmari. <laughs> Ilmari. Making it more legal like. Ilmari literally has no stake in either the gold or the gods, but he's part of the party, so he's just on board of it. As long as as long as he's not getting infected by chaos again. Mm. <laughs> you do no. remember I mentioned warp stone, right? Well, yes, yeah, Ilmari kind of twitched as you said that. <laughs> He's got, he's got like a little nervous twitch. Anything chaos related is slight twitch. <laughs> but luckily, they said we didn't have to touch the warp stone. Uh, they will be providing us with lead lined cases for the warp stone. No, no, they, they didn't. They say they didn't want us to touch it. And that's why they're not giving us the cases. The church didn't want us to touch it, but the engineering guild said that they would provide us, I think, containers for yes, it. The engineering yeah. guild also, he also wanted said it back he wanted so he it could to... carry on making stuff out of it. Yeah, and that's a big no-no. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> obviously I don't mean to intercede once again in human things, um, but playing with Warpstone, well, that's very dangerous. Yeah, that's what we were taught at university. Yeah. In a, back in Altdorf, we were told never to touch the stuff. I mean, it's literally the stone of the chaos. Gods. It's, it's literally full of chaos magic. Uh, yeah, but when he says that, I'll make the sign of the <laughs> comet. <on my> chest. <laughs> yeah, I always forget how like super religious the humans are. <laughs> it's just like, well, no, no, superstitious in the yes. <laughs> just like chaos, okay, uh, bad. <laughs> okay, well, uh, it sounds like it's a plan worth foiling. Um, I, either way, one if we recover that stuff, we're not giving it to him. I don't trust it. <sighs> yeah, no, it's no, going I'm to going to someone who's going to destroy it. Okay, and and where did the do we know where the cultists come? Did they come from underground? No idea. Okay, no, that's okay. That's fine. So we're trying to stake. We're going to try to stake out this tavern, the cocky dame, so we can get a better understanding of how all these players work together. But I'm all of these events, all, they all seem very tied. You know, very conveniently timed. All of these burnings and raids seem to have happened at a time when this big cheese bloke has had an exponential rise in power. And so, during this festival to Artur, where they actually pulled up the floor of the Temple of Ulrich to get allow access to these relics, it sounds like there's <clears throat> isn't far the too of, convenient timing. Isn't the Temple of Ulrich guarded? I, it wasn't inside. in the Temple of Ulrich. It had been they removed it. transferred to the house of the head of the Engineers Guild because the Temple of Ulrich was not secure because they were doing this work. Um, and he <clears> had <throat> this supposedly impenetrable vault, so they put it in there. And then somebody burnt down his house and melted their way through the door of his impenetrable vault. So somebody on the inside must have given him the information, right? So somebody uh, knew what's going on, and it sounds... Either somebody took advantage of the opportunity, or someone made the opportunity, given that there appears to be, like, the reason that the things had to be moved was some kind of 
uh, <laughs> political things happened. Important people politically went, we are going to hold this big festival. You are going to do this work on the Temple of Ulrich because we're going to throw lots of money at you and, and lean on you until you do it. That work involves moving some really important things out of the temple for a while. And oh. they get so on. Sounds like a, a something is afoot. I shall go get my <laughs> finest stealth cape. And you, you see him, Omar, and walks off, and it comes back with a slightly darker than usual cape. I am ready to go. Does it have large colours? No, oh, it's, 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 it's very stealthy, Jim. <laughs> if I pick up my hat. Yeah, but everybody bar. knows it's more stealthy if you put your colours up. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. He's putting the colours up. Yes, I'm ready to go. Let us go stake out this dame place. <laughs> okay, so you gather your, your bits and bobs together, what you need for staking out the place, uh, a pizza, some uh, soda, no. Uh, and you make your way across town to, it is what you call, it's still a rough area, but it's not as rough as some areas you've seen within the city. It's, you know, where, where someone probably got a little bit of money behind them would live. Uh, so it's definitely someone who's not a manual worker or, or anything like that. But yeah, you, you around the, the mid class, um, yeah, it, it's a, a nice enough area that the, the houses are a bit of quite a, a big size and whatever. And down down this this road, um, the cocky dame is on on the corner um, of two roads. Um, and there's a few shops near it, but most of the other uh, buildings are residential housing. Um, there's like a, a butcher's there, um, and there's um, a tailor's shop as well. Um, but yeah, most of the most of the other buildings are um, houses of or residents of some form. Quite a busy street. Um, there's someone shouting with leaflets on one of the street corners, shouting about the upcoming festival to um, celebrate art or um, yeah, he, he's got flyers. But other than that, there's not a lot happening. The, the pub in question, the tavern in question, does seem to be quite bustling. You can see from quite a way off, there's people coming and going from it. Is there somewhere where it looks like it would be a good place to watch from where we didn't think we'd be noticed? There is a couple of alleys over the road that you could um, um, probably hide in, but th there are five of you so five of you um <coughs> oh, jim, we lost jim we lost jim. we've lost so, jim oh no <laughs> <laughs> we're left to our own devices <laughs> that's nothing but trouble well maybe maybe uh Elmar and goes into the bar with carolyn or something and we post up in a couple of the alleys and then Elmar could ask some questions and we could be ready to move in if we needed to and watch the exterior i mean i they clearly will remember us from when they well the mus if the muscle is there from when they rousted the halfling they'll remember at least a few of us because Possibly we, including Cavalin. I was kind that's of true. laughing that at is them true. at the time. That is true. That is true. So we might have to, uh, yeah. Maybe it'll so be I'll go in there going. and start blasting. <laughs> <laughs> bottle of, bottle of uh, brandy in one hand, repeats pistol in the other. So paint, paint, the, paint the end red and then... <laughs> and mop up who's left. Oh, quickly, he's back, everyone. Stop. Stop well, ship me in. Call me Clarice. I don't know what happened there. I don't know, <laughs> but you're back in. 
Okay, excellent. Apologies there. And it is a lot um, easier to move people around on the Zoom call than it is to rearrange people. That's it. And I, I feel this is a sign, actually, that, that this uh, breakdown of technical um, magnitude that's just happened there, because the chaos gods are indeed angry um, at the way everything is getting dispatched. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I feel that they pulled pull the plug on me like for <laughs> 20 seconds to, to complain about this. So, yeah, you, you can fit down this alleyway, um, but again, there'd be five sort of five humans and an elf down an alleyway. It sounds like a, a start of a joke. Um, uh, three humans, yeah. a dwarf, and an elf. Oh, yes, I did forget. Sorry, Mordek, I did forget you then. He's got some less. Mordek is two humans in Four. a trench coat. Yeah, well, <laughs> two humans a night. I feel like dwarf that's a level of discrimination yeah. there against dwarfs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do apologize. What can I say? I, I, I can only apologize. Um, but yes, so um, yeah, there, there, is, there is a couple of alleyways, so you could both sort of split down each. Or um, is there any like door bouncers or anything like that? Um, no, not really. There's you know, there's, there's people stood near the door. Uh, drinking outside and talking to people. Um, it just looks like a very busy tavern. Imar is just going to go inside. <laughs> Imar is just going to walk out to the door, see what's going on. <laughs> go inside. Okay. Okay, so... Um, I'm assuming everybody's just... <laughs> I'm assuming everybody else is just watching Imar walk in. <laughs> no, I'm just going to slink off to the alley. <laughs> yeah, you, you walk. You walk in, and not many people sort of take notice of you. I have to say, and you look around, and there's, there is a, a couple of uh, elves sat at one of the the tables in like a booth Ooh. sort of area, um, and they they look to be um, sharing a, a bottle of wine or mead or or whatever it is. Um, but other than that, the, it just seems to be a fairly loud. Um, not with shouting, just the, the sort of mutter of voices, uh, uh, like at a constant level. And, and the, there's there's quite an attractive lady behind the bar who's cleaning tankards and goblets and the things. Yeah, I shall go talk to the bar lady. Ah, can I uh, help you in uh, a drink? And she, you notice that she has got a slight Bretonian accent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, please. A glass of wine, if you wouldn't mind. Ah, yes, of course. And she pours you uh, and hands it over to you. And I pay for said glass of wine. And I, like, casually, thinking that this is what, like, people would do, like, lean on the bar a little bit. Because like, Umaran has no idea what he's doing. He's, like, trying to interrogate you. He's like, you know, you know, you know, you talk to the bar people, right, to get information. Yeah. So, uh, you know, not knowing what I'm actually here to investigate, <laughs> just start asking random questions like, uh, busy in here tonight? Always like this? Uh, yes. It, uh, it, we have uh, a constant stream of, uh, of um, um, business. Isn't it like mid-morning? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's not the evening. It is, it is sort of midday. God, this is really feeding into Ilmarin's alcoholism, isn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, so we, we keep the conversation going, you know, trying to you know build rapport with her. And then, obviously, in the most unsubtle ways, like, so um, he flicks his hair because he's attractive. <laughs> and uh, he says, oh, I hear the, you know, I heard, I heard there's some work to be done here with the big cheese. And he winks at her. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I... And she looks, she looks a little bit shocked and a little bit scared, and she starts to polish the bar a little bit. And Would you like me to roll greater. a charm sort of... test? Absolutely, yes, yes. <laughs> and I will. And, and is she even, is she remotely attracted to me right now? Um, yeah, you would say so. Yes, yes. She, she's fallen for your charm so far. Your silver words. <laughs> then I Thanks. shall use my attractive talent and make the thirty-five a five. I think okay. that's right. five successes. Yeah. Five successes. 
Okay, yeah, so... He kind of flicks his hair and, like, smiles at her. <laughs> she looks very coyly. I'm not doing a coy look. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, oh um, Best coy look. Go. <laughs> um, and she looks a bit frightened, and she looks over um, to the far end of the bar. Um <laughs> They want my face as a gift now. <laughs> um, it will be. I'm sure this will happen. And you notice that there are some quite heavily built men, mostly in black clothing, um, scruffy looking clothing, to be fair. And in the middle of them is quite a short, very thin, um, man, uh, he, he he has a bold head, but long hair around the sides and back. He's he's got a, a moustache that has got a big line through the middle of it. It looks like he's been cut by a, a knife or something. He's got like a scar on the top of his mouth, and he looks very grimy and very slimy. Excellent. I'm um, going to flick a, you, an extra coin to the maid, <clears throat> and then I'm going to say, can I have a round of whatever they're drinking, please? Yeah, yes, of course. Um, his name is Brian the Worm. Brian the Worm. Thank you. I, I'll come back and speak to you later. <laughs> so I'm going to get a tray of whatever they're drinking, and I'm going to just literally walk it over to their table and plug it down. And I was like, an order for Brian the Worm. And he he looks round. Uh, uh, who are you? I uh, I'm Ilmarin, and I'm a new associate of the Big Cheese. And I'm going to also. I don't know you then. And I'm going I'm going to do uh, a charm roll because I've now got cat tongue, and you have to believe me if I pass this. Okay. No, I failed miserably. <laughs> hey, you've got fate fortune points, remember? <clears throat> oh, wow. Okay, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll fortune it because I feel like I need to get this one, like, right. There we go. <laughs> he has to believe me. <laughs> yeah, so you're an associate, you say? Yeah, and the, uh, the big man said you need to get back to base now. Uh, well, he'll have to wait because I've got business on. And what's this in, in in finding new people? I'm his right hand, not you. Well, I mean, if you want to make the boss wait, then I suggest, you know, you might get replaced. Drink the beers. I'd hurry up back to the boss. And with that, I turn and walk away. And he sort of peers over. And he, he says something to one of them, and one of them leaves the and, tavern. And I, I, I go outside, and I'm like, follow the guy, follow the guy. <laughs> I go outside, obviously, without Can them you make out. me a stealth roll, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, only, I don't have any more rerolls, so I apologise if I do this horribly wrong. That's you should, stealth. You've got more than one fortune point, don't you? i got one more left. Elves don't start with a lot. It's okay, Ooh. everybody. <laughs> it's okay. I'm as stealthy okay. as the... you, you signal over to your friends, and then you just happen to catch out the corner of your eyes. You're sort of looking round. You notice that Brian the Worm and a couple of his uh, friends are sort of coming over to you, and you sort of straighten yourself up, and yeah, yeah you, you realise that uh, yeah, you, you've just been very close to getting caught there. I'm assuming the guy, the rest of the team saw the signal fine. Go follow the guy. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. We've yeah. all been watching. Are they coming to talk to me or are they just pushing their way past me? Yeah. So, what did you say your name was again? Derek. That's my human name I go by because you humans can't pronounce elven names. Derek. Yeah. Derek it doesn't sound very el uh, elven. Well, have you heard humans try to say elven names? It's terrible. 
So Derek, it's you've for got you guys to you've got a you've got a problem with humans. As a matter of fact, do. I do. Umar is trying to be really big right now. <laughs> I'm trying to be uh, intimidating. If, <laughs> maybe if we see this, Umar <laughs> getting stabbed in the kidneys a few times is not going to help our cover. So anyway, I've delivered the message from the boss. I suggest you do as you're told. And he like gently, you know, like the Italians do, like gently <laughs> tap him on the face like that. <laughs> And he, he develops this twitch when you do that <laughs> in his eye. Now I'm going to go back and report to the boss. So you can either get back to the boss before me or not. Okay. So the other of you, yeah, you see all this happening outside the bar. And you see Elmar in, he almost starts doing this with his shoulders <laughs> putting his arms out like this as though he's got a bit of a problem with the whole world yeah and you see him sort of lean forward and smack the face of this little toady um skinny man really dirty looking dingy sort of you know he's a sort of bloke that you you, you know you, you wouldn't let your family near you know he, he looks a real wrong um and Ilmarin walks off and he goes back into the tavern. You can still see the guy that he signalled you after and he's walking down the road away from Ilmarin and the tavern. So we will discreetly follow him? Okay. Not all of us. I think someone should stay behind and keep an eye on the elf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The elf is going to be slinking away to follow you. <laughs> He's not staying in the bar on his own. <laughs> so, yeah, Ilmarin takes two steps down the road and then spins on one foot. So, then, well, I don't know. Um, so, who is following the gentleman who's gone to yeah, talk about it? I'm going to follow him. So, it's Johan. Just Johan? I'll go with what? I'm okay, following... Johan. I'm following Johan at a at a at a bit of a more distance because my stealth is uh, is not great. So yeah. stealth okay. is terrible, but I'm wearing so much. I've I've taken to wearing so much armor that my skill levels are kind of irrelevant. Okay, I'll, so I'll, I'll hold back, back to be as well. I'll hold back to be the one that's in between the elf and the rest of the party. That kind of link between the two. I mean, if you're relying on me for stealth, we've got a problem. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that statement, but... Okay, so could all of you make me a stealth roll, please? <laughs> oh, what oh yeah. that's that's a, wrong? Did that do that's, it? That's an impressive failure. I passed. All right, I will. Uh, I will use on. a point to reroll that. Okay. I failed by a little bit. Okay. I can't find it. <laughs> Bloody hell! I guess oh, it was is. meant to be. Oh Jesus! Yeah. I have an agility of eighteen. This is not going to go well. I got a 93 on the first roll and a 94 on Say the that. Are you, than me. So every, everybody is I, following, yeah? Um, I think I'm following closer and then think, everyone I else think, is yeah. further behind me. So the way it sort of goes is that uh, Mordek, uh, Elmarin, did you make it? I rolled a 15. I got you a rocked three. Yeah. Yeah. You got a success yeah. level. I passed. Il, Ilmarin, Mordek and... Johan are on one side of the road and you know that they're, they're, they're sort of keeping within crowds um um you know I've gone full I, assassin's creed the hood is up and yeah, I'm just, I'm absolutely i'm just about to say assassin's creed jumping in and out of baskets or well, no um <laughs> but yeah they seem to jumping be they've got the steps. idea of it and then you've got um <laughs> carolyn and hagen on the other side of the road um like Jangle, jangle, jangle. Oh, jangle, yeah, it was jangle. clank, clank, clank. Uh, and Carolyn, even though she lived a bit of a rough life, you seem to be getting this all wrong. But you think you, you've got it. You've got it sorted. You know what you're doing. 
But yeah, you're sticking out like stuff. I mean, the guy, he, he keeps looking round. But when he, he does look round, he looks towards Hagen and Carolyn. A pair of members of the of the, of the the Ulrichian church walking through the streets together. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think... And being uh, about as subtle as followers of Ulrich want to be. If, if Hagen recognizes that he's been made, um, he would uh, peel off at like an intersection, turn down the road so that he's no longer following. Okay. Yeah, so mm, I'd probably go. He, he, so he does turn around at one point and he looks generally down towards you. So you do take the next right turn and, and down there. The, the three amigos on the other side. The Stealth Brothers, um, a man, an elf, and a dwarf uh, <laughs> on the other side of the road. He, 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 you definitely think he's not major. And he goes walking a little bit further down this road, and then he, he stops at this house, looks around, and he goes down an entry next to where the house is, down like an alley. Once he's gone down, we'll probably go up against the wall and, like, peek. Okay. Yeah, so it, it leads to what looks like behind the house, the houses. Is there anyone down there? No. It, it, could, it, it looks like there's a turn in left or right down there. Then at I, the far end of the alley. Then Ilmarin will continue to try and follow, but not too noisily still being stealthy okay you hear some voices and then the steps start coming back towards you but it sounds like there's a, a couple of people not just one did we hear what they were saying as they were coming back um you were here i don't know where he's got that from but uh, uh, wasting my time yeah do we recognise the voice as the big cheese or is it somebody else? Um, no, it's not the big cheese. It's just, uh, and it, you sort of move out of the way and you sort of wait and it, it's just another rough looking bloke dressed in rags again. Um, bits of leather stitched here, there and everywhere. Um, if you paid a little bit more attention to it, which you have, it, it looks quite good armour. But from a distance it just looks like he is dressed in rags. And they start heading back up towards where the tavern is again. Oh, my plan failed, guys. I'm really sorry. I thought we could get him to lead us to uh, the big cheese. Unless he's inside. He might be inside. Let's go have a look. Hey, you can go first, though. I'm not there. there. It's just the three of us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we'll assume we're just going to wait for, like, Hagen and, and Mordek to... Uh, Mord uh, sorry, Hagen and Carolyn to, like, regroup with us. What are Hagen and Carolyn doing? Well, to be honest, I don't, I don't know that we would be able to follow where they went. So Hagen would probably double back to go back to uh, the cocky dame um, and post up outside there again to see what goes on at the at the entrance of the uh, of the tavern there. Ironically, though, in this town, these two are the 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 ones we fit that in. fit right in there. <laughs> <isn't it>? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we fit in doesn't mean we aren't obvious. Okay, well, if they're not going to regroup with us after a little while, we're like, okay, they're not going to regroup with us. I think more deck and he's talking axe should go in through the door first. Why don't you try looking through the window? That's also a good idea. Where's the nearest window? We'll go. So, we'll go down the the alleyway where they came from yeah. and look around the back. Yeah. So you turn left, which is the way that they ca came from, and you, you look at the rear of the buildings, and this alleyway sort of probably goes about 30, 40 feet down, and then it sort of turns again. But there are some buildings with rear entrances here. And 
most of the windows and that are boarded up and the doors are boarded up as well but the nearest one to you looks like even though it's boarded up it looks like it can you, you can enter and exit from it are there any like cracks in the boarding on the windows um there are a few yeah yeah how wide is the alley see if you can see anything <clears throat> Is it a wide okay. alley or is it quite a thin alley? It's quite, it, it'd fit one person down, it, like a single file. Put it, down, and then down are there any upper floor windows that are not boarded up? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, there's upper floor windows, but again, they're boarded up. Oh, they are boarded up. Okay, I was wondering yeah. if I could do some parkour on the wall and uh, go look through some windows. <clears throat> um, you look through a couple of cracks and you can see Everything's quite blurry as if the windows, uh, what what's left of the windows uh, has been sort of, well, it, it looks like dirt almost, but you can see lantern light from in there. Okay. So I read that back to the other, back to the others. There's definitely people in there or there's some lighting in there at least. So not, you know, empty. More deck. You know. What? So, how far is this in a bit of a rougher what? part of town? Um, given like I said, it's it's not what you call rough, and it's not what you call great. It's sort of somewhere in the middle. This set of buildings where you are, they do look a little out of place because, like I said, they are all boarded up. I think, Mordek, it's time that some people had a conversation with your axe and not you. Hey, up. Hey, up, by gum. I'd be no strategist like, but we don't know how many folk be in there. Well, that's why we've got the legendary Dowie pit fire. Come on, Mordek. No, you think we need to find out how many are in there first. And also, like, we've got, like, repeating... Mordek, Mordek, why don't you stick me in the back of his head? <laughs> that is that tempting, <laughs> says Wardek out loud. Exactly. So go in there. Oh uh, no, I'll not be talking to you, lad. Come on, Wardek. You feeling lucky? I'm gonna go and knock on the door. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll kind of duck the to the side and pistol out. Okay, the door opens slightly, and there's a rough looking gentleman there. Yeah. Morning. Afternoon, whatever time it be. What do you want, dwarf? I just want to be knowing how many of you are there in there. You are? I'd like to be knowing how many of you are there in there. What business is it of yours, dwarf? Well, I just want to know how many people I have to kill. (laughs) What? (laughs) Can you be telling me? How many people are in there? It ain't that hard. He's, he, he, he looks kind of confused. <laughs> well, there's I more than two, him. dwarf. There'd be more than and two. He, Do you be know of, how to count, Manling? He, he Do you be knowing how to sleeve. count? quite a nasty looking club and he stood there with it at his side he doesn't look like he's making any movement to you but he does start to give it the eye and you as well sort of a (laughs) as we've just established Mordek doesn't understand what that means (laughs) Mordek don't be doing subtly you walk on yeah I don't know who you're working for yeah but you're wrong coming around here It'd be it'd be simple simple like manling. Can, are you able to be counting? Can you count? Do you know your numbers? And he shuts the door, and you hear a clunk behind the door. Turns around to the elf. There'd definitely be one in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bodek. Well done. Your powers of deduction are incredible, and it sounds like they just locked the door. 
So I now, now it's stop a more deck. No, <laughs> let's say, and now you've got to pick the lock. I could probably do that actually. <laughs> Why don't we just use another door? Or it's a window. barred door. I don't think you can pick the lock when there's a or bar a bit... across the door. <laughs> oh, there it's not a, a mechanism to pick, I don't think. Or be using a window. <laughs> Murray knocks on the door. <laughs> <laughs> More deck steps out of the way <laughs> into the shadows. <laughs> okay, make me a agility roll, please. Myself or More deck? Yeah, you're knocking on the door, yeah? Well, both make me an agility roll, please. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> We're just going to fall over each other. Uh, agility, 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 agility. It's a basic thing, you know, Bobby? Oh, yeah. The amusing as that would be, I expect that Jim might have something slightly more entertaining. Oh, God, no. <laughs> this I've got an agility of 18. I believe in you, Mordek. I'll <laughs> <laughs> oh, be an astounding failure. And you know what? Astounding. I'm not going to do a reroll. Because <laughs> that's just funny. <laughs> oh, dear. So I passed, but I got a feeling that Mordek's failure is so spectacular, it's going to cause some serious issues. All right. It's never great when the GM has to, like, start planning things. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I didn't expect a fight here, but more (laughs) next, knock on the door. Um, I did not start a fight. (laughs) I was restrained. (laughs) Right, so you hear a click, click, Elmarin, and you jump to the side, yeah? Whereas Mordek... Is sort of stood there looking through the door. Oh, no. Blunderbuss. Um, And I'm going to have to do... Do apologise. Please ignore what I'm going to... What person I'm going to be using because I can't load up my... um, Okay. Right, you hear a loud <laughs> bang, yeah, um, and a hole about so size appears in the door, and you get hit with what's coming through. So you get an automatic two points of armour for the door, but you take eight points of damage. Mordek's going to soak all of that, no problem. Uh, he'll take one. You always take one. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. But yeah, I suspect Mordek has enough toughness and armour to go. It's only a bullet. Uh, shield plus. Yeah, so yeah, I do get take one. By your shield, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, between the door, his, the armour and the toughness, so. Yeah. He takes a I mean, point of damage. Like, yeah, he, the, the the pellets come through and sort of one hits you on the upper arm and it goes to a couple do, but most your shield takes most of it and your armor as well. Well, Mordek, <laughs> looks like you're, you're not taking little... us alive. God, everyone's packing round here. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine what's going to happen next. <laughs> Farmers <laughs> bums. Um, so, you know that hole? <laughs> yeah, this is what I can see coming. <laughs> yes? Can, can I see through the hole, basically immediately after the bang goes off, because I had my gun out. <laughs> not, yeah. Can I see through that hole? So, you go over to it, and you look through it, and you can see, uh, as you look, obviously you're not going to stick your head through it because, you know, you're, you're sort of looking gingerly round. And you notice the sight of someone moving from this room, which is immediately adjacent to the door, through into the other room. 
Oh, well, I'm all meant, like, as soon as the hole happens, if I look around the thing, can I see yeah. through the hole? Yes, you can see through it. It's into um, a small room. It's well lit. Um, there's and coats I... on, like, a bench. And, and, and in that, that split moment, can I see through that hole and see a person on the other side of that hole? In that split second, you could, but your role would be hard. In fact, uh, let's have a look. Um, it'd be a very hard shot. A very hard shot, I believe. Oh, okay, that's that's probably a little bit optimistic. <laughs> I believe. Ammo's expend. I think. Oh, I'll just go go on more deck. I think they've started it now. <laughs> Mordek smashes down the door. <laughs> Mordek's kind of looking at the dent in his in his armor. Yeah, it, it is quite shocking that you've just been shot. Yeah, no one he, seems to realize how how outrageous this has just been. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think Mordek actually has to take a cool test <laughs> for taking one point of damage. No, no, no. When you get shot, you shot black powder weapons. Yeah, I, I think there's a. I forget oh what dear. it's called. It's if game. I remember rightly, Mordek's not very good at cool tests. <laughs> no, Mordek will be great at them. He's got really high will. No, no, no. But the no, last no, no. couple of cool tests I've taken, turns, I yeah. failed miserably. <laughs> I forget what the rule is. Mordek breaks and runs. And he was <laughs> you're standing there because Mordek's taken a tiny bit of damage. I was going to suggest that maybe we wait for the, uh, you know, the wolf guys to come I and reinforce us. But... that. Yeah. <laughs> We don't know, but they've gone back to the thing, haven't they? Yeah. So that's why we decided to go knock on the door. <laughs> nice bit of uh, drunk up thinking there, guys. <laughs> okay. So Mordek's got to take a cool test then, is that correct? There's something around black powder weapons. Would a dwarf really be scared of black powder it's, weapons, though? It's a willpower roll, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah. they're just absolutely fucking outrageous, aren't they? The dwarves who make amazing firearms. Yeah, but humans make yeah, firearms, to shoot Dan, and if someone them. shot at you, yeah. <laughs> you're sensible enough to know to get the hell out of the way. Yeah. Well, maybe you not, but... <laughs> and Warren, well, make, make, me, make me a willpower roll to start with, uh, Dan. I'm, I'm watching Tented for Willpower roll. Should it be willpower or cool? I think it's cool. Yeah, it's a cool memory. test. Mm. Yeah, pass. <laughs> Just. <laughs> okay. Even though you pass, you're very much of the mindset which you currently are. You, you know, you, you are... You are Mordek the pit fighter and you do know your stuff, but there's yourself, Ilmarin and Johan against a building maybe full of not rights and they've at least got one blunderbuss. I believe. After you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're taking ages... In you. If, you, if it takes too long, Ilmarin will just go, ha-ha! Uh, yeah, God. I'm letting him right. go first. If Ilmarin can kick down the door, I'll be right behind him. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be the hilarious thing. Ilmarin's going to try and kick the damaged door open. Go for it. Shall I go get the others? <laughs> what, what, do you have any idea? Do you know where they make are? Me are a, scared? Make me a very hard strength check, please. Very hard? It's been damaged already. <laughs> Absolutely it has. But like, the bar. That's the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the middle okay. of the door, isn't it? It takes me down to 10. I've got this. Ah, <laughs> oh, so close. Can I spend a thing to make it a point of success? Isn't there a thing I can do yeah, for that? Uh, it would make it zero success levels. That, that still makes it a success, though, right? Yeah, no. marginal success. Oh, yeah. But, I would, yeah. I would, uh, I, yeah you, 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 it gives a little bit, but it, it's nowhere near broken. Ah, I've warmed it up for you guys. <laughs> if only one of us had an axe, I'll say, looking at the, the dwarf. Does it gracefully, though? Fine. 
just for the record, I think this is a bad idea. We should have got the others first. You've never said that before, Mordek. <laughs> um, was, wasn't there that time when a demon jumped us and me and the wizard fought the demon while Haken was fighting a load of rats and Mordek ran off to get help? <laughs> No, he just he ran off. He, he, just, yeah, he, ran just off. he just dressed Let's it up. He just dressed it up. Let's just dress it up. <laughs> yeah, okay, yes. Yeah, he ran off and then came back with help. <laughs> All right, fine. Okay. Got something to prove. So I will try and break down the door. Okay. Make me a roll, a strength roll, please, at hard. Oh, gosh. Um... Oh, you tried to break it down. Got an axe. I've got an axe. With... Can I use my axe? There's a hole in the door. The Eliza. <laughs> exactly. Why are you? You could to break the door uh, down absolutely. You could put your arm hole. through and try and deal with the mechanism, but it is a little bit high for you. Why don't you just put your arm in and lift the bar off? I don't want to get my arm shot off. I'm, I'm, I'm up for this. I'm not crazy though. Have you any idea Come how much those fingers cost to ensure? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the bravado in this, t- in this, <laughs> this trio. I'm <laughs> just going to leave you the three passion. there for a minute while you work out your next um, yes, actions. It. So Give them plenty of time I, to reload while you yeah. argue about how to open the door. Hagen <laughs> and uh, Carolyn, you make your way back to the tavern and you get there just as you recognise the guy that you were following Um he, he comes down the road with another gentleman um, and they go back in to the tavern. Moments later, the thin, slimy man comes out with a couple of um, guards and he he pulls a pipe out and he bangs it up against the wall and he, he lights it and he's looking round and he, he, he's sort of having a go at these two bigger men and it looks like they're ready for some sort of trouble. Okay. So I think uh, Hagen would turn to Carolyn and be like, um, well, it looks like our associates are, if they're not on their way back here. They must be staking out wherever they went. So, Make me a stealth roll, by the please. How sensible to be thinking that we're staking out. Yeah, yeah, they're totally staking it out. They wouldn't have been dumb yeah. enough to try and storm the place on their own. Actually, oh. there's Mordek involved. So, you know, obviously... I was trying to be the voice of reason. <laughs> Man, I cannot catch a break. Oh, I've got a re-roll, so I'll use my re... Well, never mind. Yeah, we both fail. Uh, I'm okay. not beating an 11 on, on a... Perception roll for someone who's decent at it. Um, as, well, that was a pretty shit roll, to be fair. As you sort of gaze out the the alleyway where you where you are, you notice the Weasley man. He sort of looks over to you and then sort of takes another look, and he turns around to his two friends as if like tell them to wait there, and he, he wanders over to where you two are. Uh, excuse me. You are excused. Uh, yeah, I, I am. Uh, uh, my name's Brian. Uh, um, uh, you, you look like a gentleman who could help me. Perhaps. What can the Church of Ulrich do for you today, citizen? Uh, well, it, uh, th- there's a few criminals around here, and uh, we've been threatened by by a gang of them. Yeah, and you know, maybe you could. Uh, uh, of course, I'd make a large donation to the. Uh, the, 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 the temple, but maybe you could come and uh, help us, a bit of backup, yeah? I mean, yeah, I, I'd like I'd like a bit of an escort back to where I'm from, and, you know, I'm only uh, a very weak individual, and, you know, my, my skills are very poor, and I, I would hate to be attacked on the way home uh, by these these uh, brigands. Nerd do wells, indeed. Nerd do wells. Well, citizen, we would hate to see anything happen to you, but I, I, saw, I saw you send a couple of very large lads away. It looked to me as if you already have some bodyguards. 
Uh, yeah, well, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, so they're not my lads. They're lads who are working for them. So I have paid them off a little bit, but they said they're coming back and they said they're going to rough me up. And mm. like I said, I'm only weak and I'm only small. Yeah. And, you know, I feel if I don't have uh, some form of protection, as one as important as yourself, uh, Sir Knight, then my, my time on this world would not be very great. You know, Brian, it was Brian, right? It, it is indeed, Sir Knight, yes. Well, why don't we escort you to the local watch house and we can see about getting the guard to take care of this problem? I try yes, not that to would be, that would That would be fine. Yeah, I'd be happy if you... Uh, if you escort me to the guardhouse, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would, I'd be good. And like I said, and he pulls out this little pouch from inside his jacket and jingles it. Uh, yeah, I'd be very willing to give the temple a donation. Well, I will let you take that up with Ulrich and the Din Father of whatever temple you worship at. But we will happily escort you to the watch. Well, why, thank you. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. <laughs> what's, your, what's your name, sir? I am Hagen Ritter von Delbers. Oh, well, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Brian. Yes, it's good to meet you as well, Brian. Are oh, you the um, owner of this establishment? No, no, no. That, that's Clara. She, she, she owns the... I, I'm just drinking there, you know. And, you know... Uh, uh, I, I was once a man of of many means and uh, much riches, but but now I find myself on my ass a little bit. To be fair, and you know, you know, people still expect me to have things, and you know, I am quite a target. Yeah, you know, I am one of the downtrodden. Yeah, here, yeah, I, I lost my house. I lost my, my family. All got killed by the brigands. Yes, yes, slaughtered in their sleep. That is unfortunate. It well, is indeed. Let us, let us hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you could give me a lift, I'd be very, very, very grateful. Absolutely. And hey, hey, maybe I could owe you a favor. Maybe you, you know, you can trust old Brian to get you information. How about that? <laughs> Perhaps, sir, but uh, I would not hold any citizen obligated to me for such a simple task. Indeed. Well, shall shall we leave for the guard post? Absolutely. Let's let's carry on then. I I wouldn't. I was going to train as a knight, you know, back in my uh, earlier years. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I had one too many breaks. In, in my arms and legs, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I was picked on as a boy, picked on. It was horrible. Mm. In fact, my, my whole life is very, very miserable. And it, uh, it, it, does, it does pain me, pain me greatly to, to think about what I have to go through on a day. In fact, meeting you and this lovely lady here, um, um, you, you know, it's really brightened up my day. Uh, Tell me, Mom, would, would you like to go out for a drink later on? I think I have other tasks to attend to. Uh, Seriously, guys, you it. do not want me trying to trying to lie my way through the, <laughs> past this guy. It will go incredibly badly, and someone will end up splattered across the wall. Possibly. That, oh. that's, all, that, that's all right, Mom. You, you play hard to get. Yeah, everybody. Uh, uh, well, oh no, yeah, yeah. I, actually, yeah, just take me to the guard post. I'd be really, really grateful. Now, Jim, uh, I'm assuming he's trying to set us up, but uh, can I make an intuition roll to? Of course, you can figure it out if that's Ab a absolutely. Sure thing. This is going to go badly, but it seemed like the thing to do. Yeah. Yep. Well, so not as bad as every other role I've done, but close. <laughs> he's obviously lying through his teeth about how bad his life's been, yeah. but he genuinely does seem nervous, and he genuinely does think he's going to get. A, well, he looks like he's worried about getting filled in. Yeah. Okay. All right, sir. Let's. Uh, now, 
Let's lead on to the guard house. And he definitely has. He definitely has took a bit of a shine to um, the priestess. Oh, joy. Well, Brian, uh, if we want to go to the guard house, we can lead you there. If there is someplace else you would like us to lead you, we'll be happy to accompany you. They, they call me Brian the Worm, actually. Yeah. Ah, huh? Brian the Worm yeah. it is, then. Yeah. Uh, for more than one reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, I typically dispense with my the formalities of my noble name. You can simply call me Sir Hagen. Sir Hagen, yeah. Sir Hagen the Wise, yes. Uh, one would hope in time, but perhaps not this day. Okay, well, yeah, shall we uh, show the party? It's down this way. Absolutely. Can you wander off? Back to the back door. Back to the snake out. <laughs> yeah. Mordek, I don't out. understand. Just kick the door in or use your axe. You know. Can you all tell me what your. I'm going to charge the door. Your uh, initiative is, please. Oh. <laughs> Last. <laughs> Uh, 47. 47. <clears throat> 37, Johan, yeah? Mm-hmm. 20. Uh, haven't you got a plus 10 now? To... No, I haven't taken it yet. Ah, uh, no. And what was yours? 20 what? More Just 20. 20. Yeah. Okay. Ilmarin. You can hear some commotion inside, and you get the feeling that they're coming. So I'm going to, like, slide past the door and shoot an arrow through the hole. I'm not even aiming at anything. I'm just shooting an arrow through the hole as I slide past, because, you know, the, my, my ammunition's a lot cheaper than the... Make, make, the me, make me a very hard roll, please. <laughs> God, it's going to go well, isn't it? Okay, let me just equip. Fumbled, your bow explodes. <laughs> yeah, somehow my bow explodes and I oh, die. The arrow bounces off the door and into Mordek's <laughs> eye. <laughs> that would be you hilarious. shoot Mordek, you, you do slide past, but Mordek looks through the hole at the same time. <laughs> no. why, is it, why is it not doing a roll for my bow? What? Sorry, just to bear with me, because my bow is not doing its usual thing where you click on it and it shoots. Well, that's annoying. Uh, Does it come up with the pop up box? No, it's not coming up with the pop up box, which is unusual because it normally, like, I just click on the boat. Oh, and do you know what? I'm in trappings, not on. on just ignore me. Yeah, I combat. There we go. <clears throat> uh, so, very hard, did you say? I've got this. I believe in myself. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, do I have any rerolls? No, I didn't have any rerolls. <laughs> Okay, you slide past, wow. <laughs> and Mordek does sort of look look in as well. And Johan seems to hear people come in, and he sort of moves to the door. But all in all, you sort of go to shoot, and the other two are really in your wake. As you you know, you've got your bow out, and obviously it takes a lot of room to sort of pull it back, and it sort of twangs off and sticks in the door about that far above Mordek's head. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, <laughs> the end of the arrow that is still quivering in the wood almost smacks you on top of the head. <laughs> As when it turns around, he kind of like just like tries to put the bow behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> Johan. Okay, uh, so I'm assuming the area around the hole in the door is getting a little bit crowded. Yes. Okay, I'll basically just go back to where I was at kind of the end of the alley, just kind of Looking around the corner, and I'm just going to make me a perception check, please. Yeah, Johan. Uh, yes. So you've got your guns out. A gun. A gun out, should I say? Um, and you're ready for it, and Ilmarin sort of jumps in in front of you with his bow and makes this impressive miss. But you sort of jump back out the way 
And as you jump back, you just happen to look up a little bit. And you notice that one of the windows above, there's someone leaning out of it with a bucket. <laughs> you might want to move. I'll say you it could, kind of. You early. could shoot him. Is it just a bucket? <laughs> He's holding a bucket like that. Uh, does he look like the thugs that we've seen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like one of those. And it's definitely in the same building. Yes. All right, I will take. You don't a want shot. to just shoot someone for um, for <laughs> emptying a chamber pot at the wrong time. Ooh, uh, I'm going to spend a fortune point to adjust down. So it turns into a hit for 19 damage. Okay. So you hit him. You don't hit him in the right leg, though. It does go, go through the thing. And it, you think you've hit him in the lower body because it did go through the window as he's leaning out. You hear him scream... And this bucket falls. Okay. Mordek and Ilmarin, you are covered in feces as this bucket comes down. Uh, do we uh, so what's new? <laughs> Honestly, no. so what's it's new? It's just sort of on top of you. Okay. Is it human feces. Human, uh, Omar has got gag a little bit. Back, back to the oh, earlier yeah. adventures, yes. Yeah, I was about there to is, say. There is a guy this... leaning out the window, but he is now slumped out the window, moving. Uh, well, he's not moving at all. He's motionless. Can we make dodge rolls? For dodging the, the bucket of pulling <laughs> feces. No, no, that, that, that just gets dropped. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, more deck. You could, uh, you've not took your action yet, so I will let you have a dodge roll. I'm, would that count as my action? It would. It's not worth it. My, I've got like a dodge of 23, so I, I, I will take my action by charging the door down. Okay. Make me a strength check, Mordek. I will try. I... Sorry, bear with me. I thought I had a talent that might kick the fuck out of the door. <laughs> a well known, very talent. specific talent. Yes, oh, it's when lifting uh, sturdy. I have a brawny physique. Oh, that just means increase the number of encumbrance points I can carry. Never mind, it means I... you lift. Yeah, I lift, I don't push. Strength, I'll roll. tell you what, if you it's can do me more than 10 damage with your axe. You smash the door through. All right, I can do it. I'll do a combat roll on my axe. But we'll call we will call it hard because you've got to hit it in the right place. Uh, hard. Get location off. See what happens. You kill that door. I failed. You miss will... the door. Have I got? Have I got a reroll? No, you've got no. fortune points. Then. I will use a fortune point now. Uh, Does no one give any rerolls so far? No. Uh, Aaron's got one. Oh, well, everyone loves uh, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves Aaron. <laughs> uh, I'll try again with my. Uh, it's, uh, it's just because I haven't succeeded on a single roll yet. So. <laughs> Marginal success. Uh, how much damage did you say? Uh, 10 points. Oh, oh, nine. It's on nine. One oh, no, 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 okay. no, 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 plus one. You said plus one for the magical axe. Yes, yeah, okay. Which isn't recorded on in here, so it's ten. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so you hit it, and you, you seem to catch some form of bolt behind the door, and it, oh, it smashes through. And you bundle through into the room get shot I imagine <laughs> and through the doorway you can see what looks like a table that's been upturned 
and there's two people behind the table resting blunderbusses on top of how expensive uh, a blunderbusses? Just it's expensive. Very. So yeah, there were two blunderbusses very. if we survived this. <sighs> What's this we? <laughs> <laughs> True. There were two can blunderbusses I, I on the say, table. If for the you record, this. for the record, I was provoked into doing this <laughs> by my illustrious colleagues. To, to be perfectly fair, they're not as they're not as expensive as a handgun. Yeah, and they're definitely not as expensive as a Hockland long rifle. Well, no. I'll but... take a blunderbuss if it's going. Do you have okay. the relevant skills to use one without blowing your own head off? Absolutely not, but I can use it as a club. <laughs> it's a very expensive very club. Intimidating, very intimidating club. I mean, surely you don't need much okay. skill to use a blunderbuss. They okay. aim yeah. their blunderbusses Fair towards enough. you. I'm about to get But you've took them by surprise, so they've oh, both okay. aimed them at you at the moment. Okay, Ilmarin, back to the top. I'm you are covered in poo. Uh, I'm coming Il- here and help me. <laughs> yeah, Umarin, Umarin, Umarin has switched that off. He is ignoring the fact that he's covered in feces. He's thought about having just a hot shower later and it's going to be fine. Um, he's going to go full Lord of the Rings right now, full Hobbit, and he's going to like parkour over the top of the dwarf, off the dwarf's shoulder, and leap onto the table and attack the people behind it. Okay. <laughs> so I nice. want you to make some form of athletics role now. I- I'm sure it's acrobatics. Well, acrobatics would be fine, yes. Absolutely. Oh, wait, no, it is athletics, sorry. It is athletics. athletics. It is athletics. It's a thing. <laughs> right, athletics, here we go. I got this, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, this session is fucking cursed. <laughs> <laughs> you, you decide to go into the door with a handspring. Okay. So you go down onto your hands and you flip yourself up uh, and you're going to do a sort of somersault over the dwarf's head. But what in fact you do is you happen to akimbo the back of the dwarf's neck. Yeah. <laughs> and you both sort of end up in a pile on the floor as you sort of <laughs> land on his neck in a bit of a... You, it's almost as if you wanted a piggyback from him. Yeah. Or a shoulder ride. And yeah, you both collapse into a pile onto the floor. <laughs> more dick. Uh, okay, looks, Johan, you've so just seen this in incredibly mind. brilliant takedown. Yeah, it, it's inspired, but the trouble is he's took more deck down. Okay. Well, I suppose on the plus side, he's given me a clear shot by getting them out of the way. Do, do I count as in cover now behind the elf? <laughs> uh, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, you move in behind them, and they're in a pile. But you move through into the the other doorway in, through well, basically the room, just to the side of the door, kind of lean around the corner yeah. and shoot one. And you, you you can see two sort of blunderbusses being levelled over the top of an upturned table. Yeah, I'm just kind of leaning around the corner. Okay, make me a hard shot, please, because of the cover. Don't they just get a bonus to their armor rather than me getting a bonus penalty to hit? Um, Probably one or the other. You can either try and shoot round the cover. What, or... Yeah. What? What are you going? Are you going to try and shoot them where you can see them, or are you just going to aim for where you think they are through the? Oh, I'm just going for it. Okay. Yeah. So Sweet yes, they, they get a little bit of an extra armor. And do I get the bonus for being at such close range? Like that? yes, yes, yes. Is. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Um, what's the modifier if I was aiming for a specific bit? It's minus twenty, isn't it? Yeah, it'd be a hard shot. All right. In Don't which case, I would, I'm going to I'm going to go for the head. Okay. Oh, uh, oh I'm going to fortune point that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so roll me the fumble first, and roll me the win. Uh, oh my god. You fortune pointed and still got a fumble and a misfire. We have, uh, we're all going to die. <laughs> no, they're yes. all going to die. So I Are think I misfire? went to move up into cover and fell over. Okay. What's your misfire? Are we all there with a pile on the floor? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. 
Um, oh, I'm, okay. I'm actually going to burn a resilience point and not have that okay. happen. Okay. Um, and I, <laughs> I'm going to change do, it. To, it does go up in the flash, but you managed to sort of drop it. In, oh, no, no, it, no. Sort I'm, of, I'm burning a resilience point on oh, my attack. Oh, so you burn attack. it. Okay. Um, okay. Declaring so, what the attack roll is. Because well, yeah, so I'm right? declaring what the attack roll is. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Because otherwise it, it's just horrific and, and yeah, Johan I mean, dies. that would probably kill me and destroy my signature weapon. Uh, I love wow, to I'll roll, I'll roll he cares, more about, cares more about his weapon than his character. I know, it would take out both. Yeah, yeah. 17 oh, I told, I told you the chaos go, well. gods were angry. Uh, no yeah, they are. They, um, they really are. <laughs> And if you I'm notice, I haven't made a roll a against you neither. Ten. <laughs> no, <laughs> literally, we're killing ourselves. We don't have to fight these guys. You'll just die ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to change it to be a ten, which will do maximum damage because the units die will be my success levels. Okay. Which would make it uh, a lot. Oh, what so, happens now is, does yeah, that, if you, do you go and edit one of those rolls so the result is a ten, and then we'll see what it is. Uh, I can't edit it. I don't think. I think. Yes, what I said, Jim. A resilience points a perma perma loot loss or it yes, is a permanent thing. Yeah. Oh, permanent thing, yeah. Worth it, mate. Worth it. But given the alternative <clears throat> is seventeen wounds and blowing yeah, his death. arm off. Yeah, it would literally be death. <laughs> Good job. I don't get it. Doesn't, resilience it points. doesn't give me the option. It gives me the option of spending a fortune point. Or taking oh, okay. a dark deal to re-roll. Oh. Which case? Hmm. That was my previous attack because I think that did one off. Uh, so yeah, it would. So it's nineteen damage. Nineteen. Okay. So there is a splatter to the head. <laughs> yeah, and the 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 blunderbuss drops to the floor beyond the table. Okay. Wow. You. Everyone take a deep breath. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We, we started a gang war with an episode of the Three Stooges. <laughs> <laughs> He's not <Okay>. wrong. <laughs> no, he's not. Uh... Where is my thing? That was just... Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Don't know whether I'm glad we're okay. not there or not. Okay. Um, Mordek in Elmarin. One of you choose odds, one of you choose evens. Uh, uh, I'll take... No, go on, Dad. I'll take odds. Evens. <laughs> Take... Imran's, Imran's floundering on your background. I'm saving you more deck. I'm saving you more deck. Oh. <laughs> like, let me pull you in front of me. Take ten points of damage. Oh dear. Um, <clears throat> you got quite a bit of armor and soak, don't you? Yes. All right. Toughness four. Having a dwarf, it's probably only like three wounds. Sounds likely. It's two. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm going to that guy. Mordek, it's your go. I'm going to go and twat him. <laughs> okay. Which one, the elf or the guy with the blunderbuss? Oh, it's a hard choice, you know, mate. <laughs> he could hit the guy they... with the blunderbuss with the elf. They both deserve it. <laughs> they do. No better time as a phrase being, they had it coming, come to mind. <laughs> right, hold on a second. There we go. Um, oh, no, I'm in the wrong place. Combat. Beard and axe. 
charging location. Um, normal difficulty, yeah. There we go. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> we cannot catch a break. Can I? I will use my second thingy point. Fortune. Okay. Uh, Hold on, before you do that, he get see how he defends. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Because if he fails worse, then you still hit him. <clears throat> and if he succeeds too well, then it might not be worth it. <laughs> All right, oh, oh, failure. Okay. So, what's that in damage? Nine or ten? Ten. Ten, ten with a plus one ten. from his axe. Oh, I love it. No, eleven. I think it's a twelve actually. Oh. Oh yeah. You know what? Because his minus one's taking it down from an eight to a. It's seven. plus three, into it, you get basically. Yeah, so yeah. Right. plus three, Eleven, plus one for the axe. Twelve. I I make yeah. it. Tw I make it twelve. I'm happy to I'll go make it eleven because the I do seven, too. The I seven, make seven, it eleven as well. The seven ah, already takes plus... into account a minus one. Yes, it does. However, the yes, minus four comes off the minus one. Yeah. So, so, only... so you take the it's... seven, you add four from his bat from how badly his rolled to get eleven and then one for the axe. That's where we're missing the one for the axe, yes. So it is twelve. Add that onto the system somehow. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. <laughs> okay, you clump him and he sort of grunts and Drops to the floor, but he's still with it. He's just sort of like rolled out the way. But he looks very damaged. Ilmarin, master of techniques. Um, so Ilmarin, <laughs> enemies, given a run in fear and confusion. So <laughs> Ilmarin's going to walk up and press his sword against the guy's neck. And he's like, tell us where the big cheese is. I mean, he's pretty banged up right now. He's not going to really like, do anything. He, he, he's not here. Yeah, I know that. Where is he? On business. You're really not getting the point of this, are you? Look, look, sword in throat means you're going to die if you don't tell me what I need to know. Where on business is he? His exact location so I can go have a conversation with him. We just um, want to talk to him. Um, well, I don't know where he is, to be honest, Governor. Yeah, who does know where he is? Um, Brian the Worm would know. Ah, oh, slimy son of a. Okay, well, look, you've you've been very helpful. <clears throat> you promise not to tell anybody about us, and I'll let you go. Okay. Um, yeah. Give up your life of crime. Turn to a better life. Yeah. Okay. Um, go join the Church of Ulrich. Yeah. Go join the <laughs> Church of Ulrich. They they always need more followers. Also, they they got you know probably maybe got some healers or at least access to healers could help you out a little bit because you look a little bit banged up. Um, but, you know, if you ever do mention us, then my bearded friend here will finish what he started. OK? Uh, yeah, OK. Good lad. Be on your way, then. Uh, can we use intuition to tell if he's telling the truth? Go for it. In my own, just automatically assumed that a sword at his throat made him tell us the truth. <laughs> uh, four success levels. Okay. Uh, he seems to be. He seems to be shutting it, to be honest. Speaking of that, isn't uh, isn't the elf a bit pungent at the moment? You don't need to remind The dwarf me. is as well. <laughs> yeah, the, to, to be fair. The, the, there is a, a large amount of pungent smell. In fact, it's even worse as well because they've been rolling around with each other on the floor. <laughs> uh, is there any buckets of water or anything like nearby? Yeah, there's a it's couple of buckets first. in the corner. Is it water? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Imari's not just weird. Imari goes it up to me. That might actually be a better yeah. alternative. Yeah. It, it, it does smell of wee, yes. Oh, not yeah, <laughs> uh, you, you guys off. have got this. I'm walking Mug off. wrestling. <laughs> yeah, standard Friday night. Uh, 
It's only wet. I mean, what do you think you dye your clothes with? <laughs> yes, but it doesn't smell like that, Mordek. And Ilmarin gets that little handkerchief and like he's got some like clothes in it and he's just like This is disgusting. <laughs> so, so disgusting. Uh, we've house. got I assume we've got the rest of this building to check around. Yeah, it, it, it looks like it looks like um, an house, but it it has been wrecked from the inside. There, there is chairs here, there, and everywhere, and there's desks and things. But you have a general look round, and it just seems to be a bit of a meeting room more than anything. And there is all sorts of clutter up the stairs. Um, it doesn't look like upstairs is being used at all. Yeah, I'll be liberating them of those. Uh... Blunderbusses. It was worth it just for that. They'll be going Absolutely. in the sack. Do these guys have any money on them? Uh, make me a perception roll, please. Ooh, uh, another skill I am. Skills perception. <laughs> <laughs> No. Astounding failure. I didn't think it went up any more levels, <laughs> but apparently it does. <laughs> I've got nothing on them. Oh, well. Just missed the gold bar. <laughs> it's an inner pocket. <laughs> right. A up by gum. How about we be getting out of here and find our way to the wolfy blokes, all right? Yeah, I've literally picked up the two blunderbusses and are walking out. Maybe having a bath yeah. while I go. Yeah, can we sure head to the bath? I'm sure they'd be me missing us. Okay. So Hagen and um, Carolyn, you get to the guard outpost, and uh, <laughs> there's a couple of guards on, and they see you walking down the road with uh, Brian, and they look a little bit confused. And can, can I help you, uh, Knight? Uh, we're just escorting this citizen here to you. Apparently, he has some concerns for his safety. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, well, you can leave him with us. We'll make sure he gets home all right. Well, Brian, uh, we have discharged our uh, our task. If you need anything else... Always keep an eye out for a knight or priest of Ulrich. We will always be around. Well, where, where are you staying, sir knight? You know, I'd like to make my... Uh, um, um, uh, my gratitude uh, more uh, visible, shall we say. And, you know, you, you have done me a great service tonight, and and so is your lady friend there. And I, I, I would, I would, you know, I would genuinely like to, uh, you know, uh, repay this somehow. Oh. Citizen Brian, there is no need. If you want to truly repay us, then visit the temple, give to Ulrich, and that is the only payment I would ever look for. Perhaps I will stop by the inn that we saw you at, and you can buy me dinner sometime. And we will call it even that way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, you want me to call by where? Or are you going to call? Ah, oh, well, cocky dame? you, you, yeah. I'll come by the cocky dame sometime. You said that you were. Oh, oh yeah. Often okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, we, we, we can we can definitely do that. Yes, yes. Well, that would be excellent. There's a businessman there that uh, I'm I'm trying to make my acquaintance of. Uh, given time, apparently he's taken some interest in uh, in the area, and uh, I definitely want to make sure that uh, this Mister Edom Gouda, I believe, was his name, uh, and the I come cheese. to an understanding. Uh, the big cheese. Is, if that is what he's called. And he, he sort of motions you away from the guards and walks to the other side of the road. What? What is it, Brian? You're, what can I help you with you, now? You, you, you have business with the big cheese. I think we need to come to an understanding, uh, I think, the, is the, a better... Miss, Mr. Big Cheese is my business partner. If you if you want to meet him with him, I can, I can sort that out for you. I'll even put in a good word for you. 
I would right. like I would like to discuss some things with the big cheese. Yes, I think we got off to some misunderstandings, and as a member of the church, uh, I want to make sure that all the citizens of Middenheim are properly protected by the White Wolf. Okay. Uh, well. Well, I, I actually do speak for the big cheese. So, is there anything I can do for you? Or? Well, I'm. We're looking into. The church has asked me to look into the recent spat of fires, and I know a man of the big cheese's reputation will probably have information right. that may help me sort out the responsible parties and bring them. Well, to I justice. have to tell you that even though he's my business partner, he is a wrong man. Yeah. And I, he, he's got in with some real bad ones lately, let me tell you. Yeah. And to be fair, yeah, I think he's past his, his date. Yeah, as, he, he's, no, he's no longer in it for the right reasons, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah it, maybe, maybe our business could do with new leadership. But well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian, it, I it, would... Since he got in with them Evan Blade boys, yeah, yeah, he's been he, he, he's been near unstoppable here. Ah, the Evan Blade, and they are here in the city then as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well then, Brian, I would recommend he's got, for you. He's got one of them on the inside as well. Yeah, on the on the inside where? Yeah. With them lot over there. Ah. Quite, quite high up is, yeah. Do you know who that is? Uh, I know he's a he's a sergeant of the guard. Interesting. I believe I... his his name is God Sergeant Kessler. Ah, uh, Kessler. Yeah, Rolf Kessler. That's it. Interesting. Can I make an intuition roll, uh, another probable failed roll, just to see how honest I think yeah. he's being with me? Oh, my God. That's a 99. Uh, so <laughs> I will use my re-roll since, uh, since I do since have it can one. hardly be worse. Can't I mean, it be can worse, be worse. Really. Wow. Only just. I finally succeeded on a roll tonight. Our rolling it seems to be talking the truth tonight. Okay, I'm I'm a you little talk- bit concerned that we now might be able to resolve this whole thing by just talking to this guy rather than going trashing his. Well, out. Brian, get the impression that he he's grown jealous of the big cheese and he he wants him removed and for him to take his place in in their business, whatever it might be. You, you do suggest to yourself that maybe their business isn't the the most straightest of businesses. Right. He does seem a little bit crooked. Even though he's done you no wrong, really, and he's been quite nice, really, apart from smelling and looking very grimy and seedy. Well, Brian, I'm going to be honest with you. My concerns aren't with the kind of business you're looking to run. My concerns are with stopping someone who's striking at the heart of the city of the White Wolf. And anyone who is working with the Ebon Blade needs to be stopped. So if you what? decide that you need him stopped and can help me get there, I will remove your problem. Well, absolutely. I, I mean, I've I've had to work with them, but I didn't want to. They're a group of wrong ones, I tell you. And they've got this really, I mean, <laughs> they, they came for a meeting, yeah? And let me tell you, yeah, they've got this really creepy bloke with them, yeah? Talk. It looks a little bit Alvin almost, yeah. But yeah, where's a hood? Bit of a dodgy geezer. Did he ever leave a name? No, he just stands at the back, yeah, making us all feel uneasy. Yeah, right, little gay. Well, he ain't little. Obviously, he's quite tall, and you know those elves, they can be very dodgy. Yeah, very tricky. Yeah, aye. <laughs> That I do know. Well, Brian, I want to thank you for the information you've given me. Um, and I do hope you will think on what I've said. You can find me. Uh, and I give, him the, I give him the name of the inn that we're staying at. 
Oh, Should. yeah. Art or rises. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yes. So should you decide that you need help with your problem, we can come to an arrangement. And I have no interest in your business practices beyond removing this cancer from the city. Okay, right. I'm going to act on my own here because even the guys that are with, a lot of them are still loyal to, to Cheesy, yeah. So I'm going to come down and, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll make, make a bit of a, I've got a lot, of, well, for maybe a bit of, a, shall we call it, recompense, I'll be able to find out a lot more information. I don't mind, you know, doing a bit of search, but obviously good information needs good recompense. I'm sure we can come to an arrangement. If you can help me put this problem behind the city, we can find a way to make sure you're compensated. I'll make my way down to your your gaff as soon as I can. It'll be sometime tonight. Okay. I'll come Thank you, Brian. Be safe, citizen. Be safe. Yeah, I will do. Yeah. He goes waddling off into the to the guard's house. Where he pats one of them on the back as he goes in there. <laughs> Hagen turns to Carolyn. Well, hopefully the others, uh, their uh, reconnaissance mission went as well as ours. Hopefully we can get some inside information soon. Okay, so you all get back to the tavern about the same sort of time. Um, in fact, you sort of almost meet up at the top of the road near the tavern. And... Mordek and Elmarin aren't in the best of states. Even Johan looks very dishevelled, as if... I've seen worse. <laughs> he, he's had a very close brush with death, almost. Yeah. Um, he, he just looks a little... Not scared, but just... As if something has just run over his grave or something. Yeah. Well met, friends. Uh, I hope you're reconnaissant, and as well as our conversation did with Brian the worm he wants to remove the big cheese and he's tied him to work with the ebon blade amongst and others tall elven looking chap yes the hood. oh the one that was in the uh, was one that was in the cave associated the with the ebon, ebon blade Potentially, I, don't know how many, I don't know how many sinister elves the Evan Blade associate with, but fucking loads. All elves are sinister and nasty. <laughs> yeah, look at that fucker who's with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that kind of blows our information out of the water a bit, little bit there, guys. So well done. Yeah, Brian the Worm will be coming by later tonight Speaking to help of... us. Sorry, he's coming here later. Yes, to help us plan. I should probably take... not be around then. I think you spooked him. I think the reason we he kept, he wanted to talk to us was he was scared that you were part of some group that was going to come and try and. Ah, uh, oh, so, he thought I was part of the Evan Blade. Oh, maybe man. not sure, perhaps possibly, but, so, but he said um, he was pretty free, spooked by you. So, what did you find while you were staking out the the safe well, house? It's funny you should be mentioning that, Manling. Um, we kind of basically just killed everybody in there. <laughs> Well, they started it technically. You just knocked on the door and then I they did. shot you. I They be starting it. They be starting it. I didn't start it, it. They shot first. Look at me. I've got holes in me. Holes in me, manly. Ilmarin has got quite an ornate um, uh, tiara. Not a tiara, but like a crown. Uh, I don't know, a fashion crown. Yeah. You notice that there is a... Um, it looks Turned. like it's got a, a <laughs> thick brown feather. Coming out off of it at the moment. Hilmarin definitely would have tidied himself up at least a little bit, even if it meant getting water out of a muddy puddle. <laughs> there was no mirrors. <laughs> Elmarin, Elmarin, my friend, I don't know if no one has told you this yet, but you're uh, covered in feces. I am aware. Smell. I can smell it. It is disgusting. I need to have a bath immediately. Mm. Please do. Yes. 
<laughs> and Ilmari like kind of storms ahead now because he's he's a little bit embarrassed and a little bit insulted that he smells like poo. And this is not <laughs> this is not something he wants to get him back to the family because you know intrigue in elven politics is going to kill me if this ever gets out. It'll definitely <laughs> shit on that. Definitely, <laughs> you, you will be known as the one who gets covered in poo. Yeah. So again. Ilmari, again. <laughs> I did. I did think of other things to put in the bucket, like boiling water and everything. But I thought it'd be far more effective to put shit in the bucket. <laughs> to just cover the elf in poop. Could I boil you a little bit and cause you a bit of now? Let's cover you in shit. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. You, you you get into it's back into the tavern wealthy. and um, Franz and Gunter. Uh, they get a couple of baths run for you, pair. Um, although Mordek don't really seem that bothered by it, he, he's got used to the smell by now. Yeah, you know it's it's all you know. Yeah. And can In we can turn turn day on the job? Ilmarin uses both baths. He uses the first one to clean himself and the second one to soak himself. <laughs> oh, I, if, if Mordek had the chance, he would have just kind of you know rinsed in a trough on the way here. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You've rinsed yourself in a trough. There is a bath poured for you. Oh uh, well, if you want one, I yeah, use it to clean my armor. Let... Okay, yeah. Um, so you you have got this plan of using it to soak and that, but you, Mordek starts getting his armor out and cleaning it with the soapy water and and stuff. Mordek, you can be such a savage at times. That's a bath. <laughs> supposed to go. You're supposed to go in it. I already be having my bath this year. Washing yourself in the horse trough does not count as a bath. <laughs> what do you mean in this year? Actually, don't <laughs> answer that question. Don't answer that question. Just, just wash your armour. And then, like, Imwaran does, like, the full witcher and just, like, leans into the water and, like, legs <laughs> over the edge and just, like, soaks into the water a little bit. <laughs> uh, on the plus side, Hagen, we did get these, and I'll say kind of reaching into a bag and pulling out a pair of blunderbusses. Ah, oh, those were, uh, well, you know me, I I couldn't even hit the side of a building with one of those from five feet, but I'm sure you'll be able to make good use of them. Uh, Just there. a thought, maybe don't have them, or for that matter, Ilmarin, in sight when, when the guy turns up. He might be a little less inclined to cooperate if he knows that we killed some of his people and stole their stuff. Well, I mean, they did start it. The point still stands. But they were more for behind the bar. Because oh, having, be having a bit of extra, having a bit of extra, should we say, persuasion for awkward customers is always handy. That makes sense. But I'm going to give them a good cleaning first, because I doubt those goons would have the first idea of how to properly maintain such a lovely firearm. Well, my friends, I'd like to hope that this Brian the Worm is going to be straight with us. He seemed to be honest in his desire to get rid of the big cheese, even if it is just to take over his organization. But we should be prepared in case it is a double cross. I'm assuming the lady and her guards have already left to her fiance's estate at this point. So it'll just be us and Gunther and Franz. Maybe we should be calling in the Arflings like for a bit of backup, eh? And uh, yeah, Gunther the... and Franz around. So um, yes, they are, and so is um, Ingrader. Okay. Who's got herself a job? Um, and the squire. So... Which one's Ingrader? Um, oh yeah, Anders is still up in bed. Uber's right guards, Captain. Right. And Anders, as you say, is... Uh, Still yeah. recovering. Recuperating slowly. Uh, does Franz and uh, Gunter know how to use these, I will ask? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Ex but they were... I think they were carrying them on the coach ride, weren't they? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, all right. I'll uh, I'll get these cleaned up, and you 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 chaps can keep them behind the bar in case of any issues. 
I think we want to try to not involve the halflings, at least not at this stage. If he's honest with us, he's trying to be extremely discreet, and I would hate to have additional players in the mix. I'd assume that they're watching us. I would think so. It's up to him to be discreet enough to get here on his own. And as you say that, the door creaks open slightly. And this... Uh, Jim. Slimy head, yes? Three minutes to ten. Okay. Um, This slimy head peers around the door. Brian, please come in. You're among friends. Thank you. So, you want information, and I can give it to you. Yeah, but like I said, the price will be high. Well, hopefully we can offset part of that cost by making sure that you get control of the Big Cheese's organization. But indeed, what, yes, indeed. What, what, what is it that you need? What is your cost? Well, shall we say five gold coins? I need to wear a little bit of muscle, don't I? Because we don't know which one's his and, you know, the loyalties of people and that. I could just go and hire some brand new muscle and make my play that way. Uh, Hagen pulls out five gold coins and puts them on the bar. If your information is good and you help us remove this threat and help us track back the Evan Blade, you can have these five now and another five when it's done. Oh, Plus oh, control of this organization. Oh, oh that's ten. Oh, oh, yes, 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 indeed, yes. yes. So what is it you want to know, Knight? And I'll go away and find out what I can. We want to know where he stays, where he's the least secure. When is the best time to take him? who his guards are, how many there are, and when he's next supposed to meet with the Ebon Blade and that tall elf that you mentioned. Okay. Is there anything else, my friends, that we need to know? Is is there any... Does he have... Does he or the Ebon Blade have any connection to, and what was the name of the guys with purple lips on their hands? Uh, the Evolving Promise. Yes, the Evolving Promise. <clears throat> How many cults does uh, I've not heard of those. Religious ludies, they sound like. Pretty much. And the only other thing that I can think of is any more information you can find about the sergeant of the guard, Rolf Kessler. Uh, well, he's in charge of uh, uh, the engineer detachment at the moment over this Artor thing. Mm-hmm. I've heard he's quite violent. Yeah, he's a Roman. And I give... I tends- give- I give Elmar a look, and then I mouth the word "corn." I, I was in my own, in my own downstairs. I thought I wasn't. I was. Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, no, he's that's out of sight. I think we're, we're keeping enough. the elf out of sight. Elmar doesn't know this guy's here. So yeah, he's coming, probably out the back in a bath. <laughs> coming down the stairs, wrapped in a towel, drying <laughs> his hair as he's coming down the stairs. Is Elmar in? <laughs> in in greater, or oh, what's for? He says what. Is the uh, the name of this guard, Sergeant? Rolf somebody? Rolf Kessler. That was it. Mm. I know of him. He, he's from Ubersreich. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. The head of the Engineers Guild mentioned him by name as well yesterday when we spoke that he was in charge of of his guard. It would be he's interestingly placed to potentially divulge information that could have led to the attacks on the engineers guilds. Yep. He certainly had opportunity. 
I would like to say that I will clear things up at, within the guard, but I am like like you new to this place, and I I doubt I I my I don't trust anybody yet. Let's put it that way. Well, corruption in the guard is something we'll definitely have to address at some point, but I think we first need to execute the mission that the church and the guild have placed at our feet. Yeah, you can't let the Ebon Blade have that kind of... Yeah. You're, you're quite right, what, Carolyn. What, what, what have they asked you to do? You don't need to worry about that, Brian. I don't want to involve you in church politics. I think it's enough okay. that we help you at your level, and then by doing so, we will help others. Yeah, I know where you can get your hands on something quite powerful. It's it's uh, some sort of engineering gun that can cut through metal. Oh, really, Johan? What do you think about that? Yeah, where to, where would it such thing be kept? Uh, well, we used it to break into the uh, to the engineer's uh, um, uh, vault. Okay, where do you keep it? Uh, it it's back at the uh, the lockup. Which is? I'm not going to tell you that because I can use that lockup as well. But I could get it for you for the right price. And that price is? Oh, well, uh, that'd have to be double what you're giving me now. We'll think on that. I would warn you, Brian, though, with, with a div weapon of that nature, the Engineering Guild and both the Knights of the Panther and the White Wolf will always be hunting you. You're greater, the greater you expose yourself, the more risk you bring to yourself. Just uh, something to think of. Mm. But you've treated fairly with us, so I will let you think on that while you yeah. gather your information. It is, it is dangerous, yeah, but it, it's certainly powerful. Uh, and that kind of power makes people uncomfortable. Yeah, Ergen the Dirty, yeah. He developed two new fingers after using it. Hmm. Now that sounds very dangerous to you, not just to what you use the gun on. Do yourself a favour and keep that in a lead box. Yeah, okay. You can find me a buyer, can you? Possibly. It came from the other blade. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to go and leave and get this information for you. Um, what was the name okay. of the en What was the name of the head engineer guy? Uh, it was uh, Helmut. Helmut was the guild lead, guild master. Yes. Um, can you also Helmut, find out? Helmut Leal. Can you also find out if Helmut Leal has any involvement with the Ebon Blade? Nah, he doesn't know. No. Nah. Can you check? Yeah, oh, I know him. He's just a duffer. He trusts too much. He's been one of our targets for a long time. All you got to do is put a little bit of pressure on him when he crumbles. Anyway, I'm going to go and get this info now. And then he leaves through the door. And we shall call it there for the night. So it sounds so like we need to find our way to that lockup. We have got a little bit of something to show you, I believe. Uh, we do. Oh, just a uh, moment. Yeah, before you all disappear, we've got some very cool things to show off. Yeah, so a couple of the guys off the Discord channel. Um, of a guy, I some think. Illustrations. Yeah, all the same. All the same. Uh, so uh, artist. 
the illustrations are. Do you have oh, the other? I've thing, not Colin? got the other thing. No. <clears throat> oh. But I oh. can probably get it relatively quickly. Anyway, talk about the illustrations for a second. Give me a minute. <laughs> so we have yeah, and looking oh, very impressive uh, with the over-the-shoulder look um, with his smoking gun. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hagen with the hammer for some reason. Not sure why he's got that. For some reason, yeah, it's it's baffling. And, and Carolyn looking very dodgy with the dagger, as if she's going to stab <laughs> someone in the back. Well, we're in a nice tavern. Yes, absolutely. But yes, um, we'd like to thank him very, very much. I think that, that it's some really good work, and it's uh, yeah, that it's was, uh, by Josh on the Discord, and yeah, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely, it's it's really uh, really good that we get you know such interest like that. So, thank you very much. Um, maybe we can come up with a drawing for Mordek and Ilmar and I Max. believe he is working on it. Yeah, I think he said he was. Yes, I maybe want a joint portrait. Shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm rolling round on the floor in <laughs> shit. <laughs> in shit, yes. But no, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, it's been amazing again. Um, I believe we've what, have we got anything going I on tomorrow. I do have uh, another thing to show. Yeah, we've got oh, one more thing uh, to show. Which, uh, I just need to... So, uh, in a different group for Warhammer Fantasy Battles... Uh, there we go. A lo now. lovely chap named... Andy Howes uh, paints up this excellent steam tank and has dubbed the commander of said steam tank Johan von Erfinder. So we can see where, ideas, you, where you see, where you see where Johan's career is going to take him, that's for sure. Yeah. If he doesn't blow yeah. himself up. This no, is no, a... no pressure, Jim. I get a steam tank. It's all looking to <laughs> the future. I... Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. Is it powered by steam or is it powered by warp stone? At Steam, Warpstone Ooh, Steam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Warpstone there. I guess we'll see where things go. Yeah. <laughs> so again, thank you very much, Andy. The awesome work. Um, I love the uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle uh, Empire stuff. Uh, great miniatures and uh, great stuff. But yeah, again, thank you for joining us. Um, tomorrow night, Thursday... Star Trek, Trek Adventures. Adventures. Star, Trek Star Trek Adventures. Star Trek Adventures. At uh, <laughs> 1 p.m. British Standard Time, I believe. And then okay. Thursday night is Delta Green, Episode 2, Ooh. at uh, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Excellent. Excellent. And please join us on the Discord channels as well. Lots of conversations going on there from lots of awesome people. Uh, lots of chance to get involved with games as well. So, Please join us there. Um, join in a great community. But for tonight, once again, thank you very much for joining, uh, joining us. Thank you for my great players. And we'll catch you next week. Okay. Thanks, thank Jim. you. Bye. Au revoir.